So you probably heard somebody say that they went on this uh, streaming platform and you hear things like, I've seen all that there is to see, or in the best case scenario, it's all just repeats. But it's literally impossible to see everything available on just one of these platforms. You just don't have enough hours in your life or, or to do that. Um, you don't even have enough time to go through the available options and decide for yourself what you want to see. This isn't the only example of the day-to-day -day decisions that uh, figure into our daily dynamics. So uh, there are so many habits we develop without ever asking ourselves why. We do it just to save energy. We fall into patterns. Uh, but for some time now, those patterns of ours are being studied to decide what's best for us, or at least to nudge us. What am I talking about, you ask? Well, you probably guessed. Um, artificial intelligence is a reality and it's already part of our daily lives. It guides our decisions without us even realizing it, using data that we ourselves provide. Even right now, as you settle in to enjoy the session in which I will talk to you about the uses of artificial intelligence, the challenges associated with it, and now and in the future. So what do we mean when we say artificial intelligence? Well, a useful way to frame is in the sense of the usage of learning algorithms on data to improve decision making. Sounds simple, right? Well, not quite. Uh, first of all, it's necessary to understand when artificial intelligence can or should be used, and this can be summed up as follows. When complexity and frequency of those decisions are both high, well, we probably have a good use case. For example, when you use a search engine, artificial intelligence determines what pages come up. It's not the same information uh, that search engines had to process, let's say, 15 years ago. It's become much more complex and much more frequent, which is where AI comes in. Now, the same thing happens whenever you use a GPS to find a route or when an online shop lets you know your order is about to arrive in the next two hours, let's say, hopefully. It's a reality that is part of our daily lives, though we may not notice it. All day long, we make decisions. So if we can find a tool that helps us utilize data for those decisions, well, that's wonderful. Now, I want to tie this topic with three aspects of artificial intelligence that really shed light on its complexity and its nuances. There is the technical aspect, the business aspect, and the, let's call it, philosophical aspect. First, we'll look at the technical aspect. For example, the neural network architectures that arise, how I apply a mathematical model to a situation or problem, or how do I define the data collection to solve that. Then, there's the business side of things, how to improve the decisions people are making, what applications can be developed to optimize those decisions, and so on. And finally, there's the philosophical aspect, which is related to the reasons for deciding whether to implement AI for a certain user. That's the level where we think about, for instance, whether or not to collect certain data or use the data and process it to foster certain decisions, or maybe decide to find another approach altogether. The combination of these three aspects is what makes working at Globant so interesting. It provides the flexibility necessary to consider all three of these aspects at once. The key lies in the questions we're trying to answer as part of a company team. And so here's a fundamental question in this field, adequately defining the problem to be solved. Let me put this in another way. If you've adequately defined the problem, then you're halfway towards a solution. And also you have laid the groundwork for further development. On the other hand, coming up with a perfect response to a poorly formulated problem is the worst path forward and it's probably going to generate more problems down the line. Here's one example. Let's say a social media platform defines a model that shows you everything that will generate engagement on your part. So in other words, it will encourage you to give likes, write comments and spend more minutes uh, connected. After all, that's what they are after. So what happens then? Well, the breadth of the content of the platform starts shrinking in order to satisfy only that goal. So earlier I mentioned streaming platforms where uh, maybe recommendation algorithms will start suggesting contents based on what you watch. Over time, fewer contents will surprise you and that's not surprising. So the solution isn't so simple. It's difficult to set limits, for instance, because the aspects that challenge you 
as a consumer need to be balanced with those that help expand the scope of your choices without you actually losing interest. So um, at the contents level, for instance, if somebody is kind of dead set against, I don't know, vaccines, and you show them a video about the number of people who avoided a certain illness thanks to a vaccine, that person will think, well, that's just propaganda and it will not engage, they will not watch it. So you won't really break through that barrier. So it's difficult to obtain data that challenges you, but also keeps you on the side. Um, that's because the data available is based on what a person saw, what they liked, but it's impossible to know how open they are to maybe something new. What I want to emphasize here is that the data we can obtain don't adequately capture all the complexity of that human decision. So now, what are the challenges that await? Well, I believe that within Globant, the challenges are linked to how to capture business opportunities. That is, identifying the moments when we need to reach out to our AA people to build an application that is aligned with all the aspects we've been discussing. Complexity, frequency, technical viability, adequate questions, and that philosophical approach. On the other hand, it's important to configure our thoughts within regarding to the advances of artificial intelligence. That is, how is our world dynamic going to change? The first thing that comes to mind is like, I'm going to be out of a job, uh, but what we should actually be thinking instead is about learning to learn. And let me put this uh, in another way. Memorizing a fact, a necessary valuable skill in the past, is no longer worthwhile. Contents are just there for the taking, it's just a click away. So what really matters today is choosing what content I need to learn in order to move up a step. And choosing that content isn't simple, isn't the most trivial thing. That's why I say I need to learn how to learn, because the technology context changes as rapidly as the social context. Second, and this is related to the first, asking the right questions opens up the possibilities of using artificial intelligence in the right way. Because, as I mentioned, AI is going to give you the best answer, but never the most accurate question about the problem I wish to solve. The final key challenge is related to the context. Data collection always requires, let's say, a stable reference, but we know that things can change from one day to the next. Uh, COVID certainly shows us that. For example, all the transportation algorithms changed because of the abrupt halt in mobility. And when things are stable, well, some generalizations become possible and that's when data helps you make the, the first predictions and then make the decisions, right? I like to connect this final challenge with the topic of leadership because it's a key point. There are areas where artificial intelligence is going to replace human work. Things that need to be automated, that can be automated, will be. So the role of the leader uh, there is to align the efforts of the team with a perspective linked to defining the problems that need to be resolved. In other words, the focus needs to be on the creativity, on the change in that context. This is the leader's biggest challenge, making the right decisions on how to use AI. I'm going to give you an example connected to leadership, but also to diversity. Uh, a large corporation had a problem because it used AI in a search to filter CVs for their recruiting. So what happened? Well, the parameters they said relied on the profiles of the company current leaders. And most of those leaders were white American men. So uh, the algorithm left out women and people from other ethnic groups. It was never their initial intent, um, but the problem was that the basis for comparison was already biased. It was a data analysis problem. But AI can also be used to seek out the people outside of the useful channels, people with the profile a company needs, even though they might not necessarily coincide with the patterns recognized in the data. That is an example of an optimal use of AI. In closing, AI is clearly a powerful tool for enhancing data-driven decision-making, especially with the rise in frequency and complexity. And in an increasingly digital world, the panorama expands even further. In other words, there are more and more situations in which complexity and frequency rise. In response, we need to focus on decisions that are good to make, not just on making decisions just because we can, because we're technical uh, able to do so. The guiding question should be, does it make sense to solve this problem with AI? All right, I hope you leave this session with something meaningful. 
If not, well, you can complain to the algorithm that led you here. And thanks for being on the other side.